we're just going to be particularly sensing how God speaks into our lives today. And uh, Father, I thank you for Nigel. Thank you for your call upon his life. And I pray, Lord, as he speaks tonight, he may sense that real awareness. As your word says, if any man speaks, let him speak as an oracle of God. May he sense something of that, Lord, tonight as you speak through him to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 An oracle of God? <laughs> Rob, what are you doing to me? Crikey. All right, get ready for it, ladies and gentlemen, for the Oracle of God this evening. Um, good evening, everyone. My name's Nigel. I'm part of the team here, and uh, great to see you. How are we doing? Are we all right? Are we hot? Have you notice the fans that are pretty much just circulating warm air around, so you all get to share in the warm air. They don't actually do anything. But they look great. Um, lovely. Well, um, what we love to do in this church, we love to preach from the Bible. So if you've got your Bibles, well done. And I'm going to be reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3 uh, shortly. And what we're going to do, actually, we're starting a new series called The Voice. And I was going to get The Voice theme tune and play it as I walked on for a big grand entrance. But I'm really glad I didn't. Um, but there we go. We're doing The Voice. Why are we doing it? We want to look... Uh, this month about hearing God's voice and being able to, I guess, grow in hearing God's voice. So give me a little wave if you've ever heard God speak to you in one way or another. Give us a little wave if you have. Lovely. Um, give us a little wave if you've heard God speak to you this week. Well, well done. How about, give me a little wave if you've heard God speak to you today. Okay, good. Thank you. God is a chatty God. So um, I want to be, I suppose, right at the beginning, if this is, I guess, Christianity and God and Jesus and all this stuff is a bit unfamiliar to you, then first of all, I want to say we absolutely believe that God loves to speak and God speaks to us today. And I guess the heart of this series is as a church and as a community to grow in how we hear God speaking to us. And we need to listen in two ways. We need to listen to how God speaks to us personally individually but also it's really important that we listen together as a community what is God saying to us as a community as a as his people so um I don't know how you expect God to speak how you think about that maybe you think God speaks in a big loud voice that's very dramatic and big and it does happen has anyone ever heard the audible voice of God as if an actual voice is speaking just give me a little wave if you have not many people. It's rare. It's rare that that happens, but it does happen. And uh, in the Bible, there's a couple of times, actually with Jesus' ministry, when he got baptized, the voice of God, the Father speaks in Matthew 3. And then again in Matthew 17, the transfiguration, God speaks. And in fact, some of the disciples who are with Jesus are terrified. This huge, big, loud voice of God. But that so rarely happens in the Bible. In fact, we're going to be looking at some of the ways that God speaks to us this month. And one of it is um, looking at the quiet, still voice. There's a story in the Old Testament about a prophet, someone who would listen to God for people and share what God was saying, Elijah. And Elijah wanted to hear from God. And God said, I'm going to, I'm going to speak to you. But there was this big, big um, earthquake. Well, there was wind. And in this huge storm, but God's voice wasn't there. And then there was an earthquake, and God's voice wasn't there. There was fire, God's voice wasn't there. But then a quiet whisper was where God's voice was. And maybe for many of us, that's how we experience hearing God. It's not a loud thing. It's a, a quiet whisper. But tonight, we're going to be looking at what God's voice is like as a familiar voice, a voice that seems very familiar to us. In fact, sometimes so familiar, it can even feel hard to hear and distinguish. Is that really you, God, or is that just me? So we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And you can see it on the screen, or you can read it with me. The boy Samuel, just to be clear, Samuel is a prophet, someone who is working in the temple um, at a place called Shiloh. So this is a temple like a church, but it's where the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence, is. And um, from a young child, Samuel has been there growing up and learning around being a priest and ministering. So the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli the priest. And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Now one night, 
Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. They're probably getting really annoyed of each other by now. But then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down and if he calls you say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. So what does God's voice sound like? For Samuel, he got confused. It was just this voice that sounded like Eli. It must have been Eli and running off to see him. The, I suppose to grow in learning how we hear the voice of God, we need to learn and we need to discern. We need to learn what it's like, but we also need to discern. That means to discover, to work out, to focus in, to become clearer. And as we do, as we learn and discern, we become clearer and clearer around the voice in our lives. For me as a young Christian, there were two ways that, well, a way that God always spoke to me, and I knew it was God. And the way it was, often there'd be a person that would pop into my head, and then a, a, an amount of money that I had to give them. Like, give that person 200 quid. I'm like, there's no way I'm giving that person 200 quid. 20 quid, maybe. But even back then, 200 quid was a lot of money. And um, so I didn't. And it just kept bugging me that I had to give this person 200 quid. And it kept bugging me until eventually I did. And the moment I gave the money to them in an envelope and hid it away, it just lifted off and went. And after a while, I started recognizing this pattern that, I'd start having a name and a figure of money that was always a lot more than how I would naturally want to give. I was on the 20 quid level of generosity and God was on the 200. And I thought, I think this is God because I would never think of giving that person that amount of money. But what it did is it, it tuned me in to learn to start to be a bit, I guess, disrupted, interrupted. Oh, that, I think that is you, God. And um, in my time of being zealous after the Lord, I would have times of regularly praying and fasting, a whole day where I wouldn't eat, and I would pray and I'd earnestly seek God about everything. And um, one occasion, it was in the morning and I was walking and earnest would be the right way. I was very hungry, I was tired and I was miserable and I was earnestly seeking God, trying to pray for everyone. And, and I just felt God say, can you stop being miserable and just eat some breakfast? <laughs> I did, he said, I just wanna hang out with you for the day. Have a good time. And I was like, really? Am I allowed to do that? Can I? So I went and had a breakfast, had a great time. Can't remember what happened, but I really felt God say that to me. It's like, why, why do you think being all fasting and earnest is somehow a really spiritual activity? Because probably I was just really annoying God. And um, that was another way that I, I learned to hear God speak to me. So we have lots of voices going on. I don't know what your head's like. Is it a busy place with lots of things going on? Lots of different voices maybe competing for your attention and stuff. So I've got a little something for you. Have a little listen to this. This is, um, well, this is a bit of what goes on in my head. Mm, I'm really hungry. Mm, I'm really hungry. I wonder what's for dinner. Oh, I must post that letter. I haven't done that for two weeks. I've really got to do it. What is a Vossi bop anyway? Nigel, don't forget to phone your parents today. I want to know what love is. I really must try and get to bed earlier. I should have emailed Chris yesterday. I can't believe I've forgotten. Oh, you're so rubbish at praying. You'll never be like Rob.
Nigel, don't forget that you're picking up Daniel from nursery on Tuesday. And there's a form to pick up too. No, not forms. Oh, why does England always go out in the semi-finals? <laughs> That's the kind of thing that goes on my head all the time. That's just normal. That's the normal stuff. Now, the thing is, did you hear God's voice in that? Did you hear God's voice in that at all? Which bit? Well, you should have done, because it was there. I put it in just for you. It was Lorna reminding me to find my parents. Honour your parents. That may go well for you. For me, I've not been very good at keeping in touch with my parents, and it's one of the things that I feel God has been saying. You need to communicate better with your parents. Don't forget to phone them. But in the hubbub of everything else, and sometimes we get those negative voices, don't we? Those critical things. Oh, I'm rubbish at this, or you're never going to be that. It's a minefield. So look, do you want to hear how I normally listen to God when I take some time to listen to God? This is what I do when I take some time to listen to the Lord. Okay, Lord, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen to you now. Speak, your Lord. Your servant is listening. Oh, I still haven't phoned my parents. Oh. <laughs> Shh, be quiet. All right, I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> Lord, speak to me. Your servant. Ha oh, how's the rest of that go? I'm rubbish with words. I can never remember how that... Shh. Lord, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, well, not to worry. Um, let's speak another time. Um, yeah, maybe next week. Is, is that just me? Or I have drum beats going on all the time in my head. I'm a drummer, I'm allowed, and they're very good. So let me tell you, here's some things. I think there's two ways that we can really get things wrong listening to God. We can over it or we can under it. And we can over-spiritualize and we can under-spiritualize hearing from God. These are pitfalls. The over-spiritualizing thing sounds very spiritual. You seek God about everything. Should I have marmalade or jam on toast? Lord, only your will. Show me. Everything is to do with God and seeking him. And everything is about, yeah, God told me to go here to buy this, to do this thing. And actually, if you know people like that, they're lovely, but it can be a bit irritating because after a while, if you look at the story of their life, you think, maybe God didn't say that. Maybe it was just you wanting to have marmalade on toast, which is why you had marmalade on toast. What's that got to do with God anyway? And yet they seem to be kind of hyper-spiritual, hearing from God about everything in every way. God's told me this, God's told me that. Well, he hasn't told you you're an idiot yet, and he should do. <laughs> it's a joke, guys, it's a joke. Um, but sometimes you can think that, right? This hyper-spiritual thing that seems so spiritual, but actually it's naive, it's an immature faith. It's actually not wrestling with the fact that we don't get everything all the time. We don't get it all. And so we can over-spiritualize. And it can see, we can get away with it in church circles because kind of it's quite hard to call people on that. But the reality is you maybe wonder the relationship isn't quite there. Maybe it's God everything. God has to say this. God has to do that. And it can be very hard to challenge. And so we can over-spiritualize things that actually I don't think God ever meant. He doesn't mind if you have marmalade or jam. He's really happy for you to choose. It will bless him either way. And so sometimes we can go to town with it, but the other side is, is the under-spiritualizing, where we then play the sort of card where, actually, God never speaks to me, ever, never, ever. Oh, he speaks to everyone else, but he never speaks to me. You know, he's just got it in for me. I don't know why, he just never does. And maybe you can be a bit cynical. Maybe it's come out of a place of pain where you really wanted to hear from God and haven't. And so suddenly that you lose faith, you, you lose an expectancy, even a hope that God would speak to you. You can even be proud of it, that God never, oh, he never speaks to me. I've never had a prophetic word. Everyone else has, and no one's ever shared anything with me. And we can under, we can under-spiritualize. But the real reason that this can happen, I think, is that we get hard hearts. In Hebrews 3, chapter 3, in verse 15, actually it's a quote, but it says this, just as being said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your, harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. 
You see, in our passage with Samuel, Eli the priest is an old priest. And actually, they're in a place of spiritual decay. He's old, his eyesight is going. And notice how the passage talks that there are no longer visions, things aren't being seen. He is becoming dull and slow. You can see it because actually he's not quick to even recognize that God is calling Samuel. It's only on the third time that the penny drops. Whereas Samuel is young and has an open heart, a responsive heart. He gets up to respond straight away, yes, you've called me. Thing is, if you have a hard heart, if you're closed to that, then actually it is very hard to hear God. It is very hard to hear. And so actually we have to do work and are our hearts open to God or are they closed? For Eli, he was dull spiritually. Maybe he started off in a great place, but on his journey, he's been fading and he's come, become dull and is missing being able to hear and understand God speaking. So maybe for you tonight, do you over-spiritualize? Or do you underdo it? You play it down? Or maybe you know that you've become a bit dull, that in the way that you used to hear from God, just there isn't that resonance, that freshness. Maybe there is a hardening. Maybe, God, is my heart hard to you? Is it as open as it has been before to hear God's word? I want to share with you um, five things, I guess simple ways that I believe that God wants to speak to us. And we're going to be exploring this throughout the month, so I hope we can have lots of fun just saying, God, speak to me. What are you saying to me? And actually we grow in it together. But here's five things that I think are just really key in how we hear from God. And most of them are very straightforward. You'd be able to answer it. I've tried to do it all with P, but it's actually quite difficult because like good preachers always have the same thing. Here's the first one, perusal of the word. <laughs> I just want to have read the word, but I could, it had not begin with a P. Reading the word, the Bible. So it's interesting for Samuel, there, there was the law, but there wasn't this thing here. In the same way that we get to read this, this is God's word. For me, I would read it every day and be like, God, speak to me. And I was waiting for God to speak to me. And days after days, nothing would happen. I was waiting for that verse to kind of jump out and attack me. Have you ever had that when you've read the Bible? You're like, wow, never happened. And then one day I had this little revelation. I thought, I'm asking God to speak to me, but this is his word. He is actually speaking to me right now. Whatever I'm reading, that is God speaking to me in the Bible. I'm, I'm not trying to wait for a magical moment. Whatever I read, God, this is your word to me today. This is your word speaking to me. Many of us don't hear God because we don't read the Bible. And we don't read the Bible with people. And we don't ask the simple question, what is God saying to you today through what you've just read? It really is that simple. But actually for a lot of us, doing it with other people really, really helps. This week, someone prayed for me. And as they're praying for me, they, they said Psalm 1. I feel a thing about Psalm 1 for you, Nigel. What they didn't know is Psalm 1 is a life verse for me. That means it's a bit of the Bible that's so familiar to me, so special to me, that the moment someone says Psalm 1, they have my attention because God is speaking to me. It's the little key that's like, I want to speak to you, Nigel. And people shared Psalm 1 with me. It says this, the delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Chewing on this stuff, on the word of God, is how we come to know and become familiar with his voice. The second thing, preaching. Preaching the word. That guy's got a lot of notes. You need to condense it to one. When the word is preached, like right now, when it's expanded, something from the Bible, someone's explaining it to you and, and telling you about it and teaching you, but they're not just trying to come up with some funny things. What's really happening is this. God is speaking to you. An oracle from God. So even though God is using me, as you're hearing my words, as you're understanding what's going on, actually you're saying, God, what are you speaking to me through this? Is, is this how you understand preaching? Just to be really clear, this is why you come here on a day like today when it's hot and lovely outside, is that when the word of God is preached, there's an activity of God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, that energizes the word for us today, right now, to be brought into your life. One of the reasons I believe in church and coming to church, whether I'm feeling it or not, 
I believe, in sitting underneath preaching of the Bible. Then people was preach from the Bible, and I would say, God, speak to me. And when you do that, it changes from, was it a good preacher or a bad preach? Did you like that preacher or not? To say, God, what do you say to me today? God, what have you said to us today? So sitting under the preaching of the Bible is so key. And as you do that, as you listen to it, God speaks to you in your hearts. The third one is presence, the presence of God. Samuel grew up next to the ark of God, literally where God dwelt in the tent of meeting, the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, like this evening as we worship, as we draw together, when God is present, our hearts become softened to him. We tune in, all those other voices quieten down that we can hear and know God's voice, God's presence in our worship. Are our hearts open to him? I'm going to be honest with you, at seven o'clock, my heart isn't always open to God. But as we worship, as we open up, as we just quieten ourselves down and tune into God, my heart and my spirit become open and alive to God, God's presence. And when that happens, we're more in tune to hear him. The next one is people. People are incredibly important for how you hear God. I love the story that Hannah shared in her baptism. When wrestling with that question, does God turn his face? And her, she asked her friend, and her friend said, no, absolutely not. Now, was that the answer? No. What did it do? It prompted something in her. Do you think maybe God spoke through her friend in that moment? And in doing so, left to go. Have you ever had a conversation with someone, and afterwards, or a bit later, you know, you know that thing you said the other night about that, that stayed with me. I've just been, you know, I don't know why, it just stuck with me, and I've been thinking about it, and maybe that was God speaking to you through a friend. That's again why I believe in being church, in being community, is that actually through one another, many people are here. I've heard from God through not only the lives of things that people have spoken to me, and actually I think, I got, I think God is encouraging me, but also the model of lives lived that inspire me and challenge me, that I see God in, and in doing so, that speaks to me about what the life of God is like. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? So being around people, being connected in community just isn't optional in following Jesus because God wants to speak to us through his people. Okay, the next one is prayer. It seems obvious. And yet for a lot of us, we struggle with prayer. We do our shopping lists. We do all our needs. We do everything that we need to get from God. But prayer is more than just asking for stuff. But it's that relationship, that place of talking. James says you don't get because you don't ask. Maybe we don't hear from God because we haven't been asking him. God, help me to hear from you. Show yourself to me. Maybe this week that would be a great prayer. God, help me to hear you more. Talk to me. I want to try listening to you and opening up to you. And finally, happenings. Happen <laughs> happenings. <laughs> it got hard as I got to the end of the list. Events and circumstances and stories. Have you ever thought God speaks to you through things that don't happen? The job that you didn't get? The thing that didn't happen? Or maybe a situation that you've been involved in and it's prompted you, it's provoked you to think and reflect. And in doing so, God has used that to speak to you and show you more of himself. An obvious example for me is I have three little boys and in becoming a parent, becoming a dad, God's spoken to me lots through that, through the joys, but as well as through the challenges and my own limitations. The things that happen, God uses to speak to us. And again, there's not a formula on that, but I believe God loves to use all sorts of ways to share his heart with us. So there you go, there's five for free. Now, what you really want to do is hear from an expert, and I'm really delighted to have my friend Liz, who's going to come and share with us um, about how to hear from God, and a bit of her journey of hearing from God. So would you give Liz a really big warm round of applause? Liz, it's great to have you here. Now, just to clear something up, on Dave's email, he said that Nigel and Liz Evans were going to be sharing this evening. <laughs> News. Right. We're not, we are married, but not together. I've got a wife, you've got a husband. So just a bit, Nigel Savage and Liz Evans are sharing this evening. 
glad to get that cleared up. Um, now, Liz is someone who has an exceptional gift of hearing from God. And we really recognize that in her. And actually, she, go, she loves to encourage people to hear from God and how to do that. But I thought, I'd love to ask you, Liz, just a couple of questions of how did that journey start for you? When did you, I guess, first start hearing from God? I grew up in a house where nobody heard from God except through the Bible. So I didn't know the word prophecy, but I just had a longing to, to hear God speak. Um, I think it came from God. So I'd spend two hours every Wednesday on my knees. God, God, I want to hear you, I want to hear you. Nothing. Month after month, and I got very discouraged. But gradually, as I would go for a walk or be in worship, he'd just start to whisper to me. But it took me a while to get my ear in and to learn what was him and what wasn't him. And then I was very, 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 very ill. And... Um, I couldn't speak and I couldn't move and for a long time. And often I wouldn't see people for five days at a time. But Jesus would just walk in the room and he would just sit on my bed and he wouldn't use any words because he knew you words were too difficult for me. But he would just sit and after a bit he would walk out again. And it was just the way that I got to know him. And I don't think that's the way you will get to know him. It was just what I was doing in my life at the time and whatever you're going through right now is the thing he'll use to teach you to hear him and know him better because he sees you and he loves you and he comes when you need him. Wow. And for you in those kind of early days of starting to hear God's voice, I guess really simply, how did you know it was him as opposed to just your thoughts and ideas as you were walking and just kind of figuring it out? How did that work? Probably the same way as we know those we love and know spend time with. So if I got a note and somebody said it was from Nigel, I don't know Nigel well enough to know whether I could say, well, no, Nigel really did say that. But if I got a note from my husband or my children or someone who's a friend, I would go, that's definitely not them or that definitely is them. And it's just simply a matter of relationship and time and yeah. just knowing him. Yeah. And so I guess what I said at the beginning, this learning and discerning, we all start from hearing with God at the same place. Wherever you are is where you are. But there's always another step of growing and learning and becoming more and more familiar with God. What would you say, because you, you teach lots of people and help people to kind of tune into God, what would you say is maybe some of the biggest hindrances, the obstacles, the things that can get in the way from being able to hear from God? It's a lot like my daughter in maths. She was terrified of maths, but if you sat next to her, she could do the maths. Okay. If you think you can't hear God and I sat next to you or Heli sat next to you, um, you could say what you thought you heard and we would say, oh, that's this, this and this. And suddenly it's the confidence to know that he is really good at speaking. Doesn't matter squat if you're bad at listening. He's really good at it and he's done it for thousands and thousands of years with millions and billions of people he does it prophecy isn't difficult it's impossible you may as well relax he really <laughs> loves okay. to speak to you so liz i was wondering would you like to hear from god this evening church would you like to we were wondering about just doing a little exercise very quickly just as a way of just getting going and encouraging you to say would you be up for that Okay, let me just explain something very simply. Um, Liz is going to ask you guys to find someone, and we're just going to do a little exercise of listening to God and then sharing with that person uh, if, you if you heard something and what you heard and go from there. It's very simple, but I want to make it really clear. If you don't want to do it, that's totally fine. We don't want to put anyone on the spot. We don't want anyone to feel awkward. So, or if you're sitting on your own and you can't think of anyone, then choose me. Think of me and then come and tell me afterwards, or Liz, or maybe a friend of yours in home group or something is not here. It's as simple as that. It's just going to take a couple of minutes and be easy. Are you up for that? So I just need to make that really clear. If you don't want to do it, you're just allowed to say, I'm all right, thanks. I don't want to do it. And that's totally fine. Okay. Don't look so nervous. You're looking nervous. All right. So um, Liz, do you want to explain what we're going to do just for the next couple of minutes? Yeah, we call these prophetic party games. That's what the Norwegians call them when we go over there and teach people. The best place to get you to relax is to play. The best place we can get you to learn is to play. But just to put it in a scriptural context, we all the time, we make artificial places to hear God. 
we're all in quite an artificial time to hear God. We decided to come at seven o'clock to church tonight. You might decide to have a quiet time. You might decide to put on some worship music, go for a walk to hear God. And we're making a little artificial space. The thing I realize is the minute you turn your face towards God, like any loving, doting father, he turns his face towards you. If I give you um, the job of hearing God for your partner, one, that's a lot of pressure, and two, it's an awfully big brief, and some of you could go on for hours telling them chapter and verse of what's going on in their life, some of you would find it a, a huge pressure. So if we just have fun with it, right. um, you can relax. So we're going to do this. We're going to do it just like God did with Jeremiah when Jeremiah started off hearing God. By the end, they were chatting away quite happily to one another. At the beginning, he said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, I see the branch of an almond tree, which is a word play for the Hebrew, for I am watching. And God said, yes, I'm watching. And uh, all he said was to Jeremiah, then what do you see? Go to the potter's house, what do you see, Jeremiah? So I'm gonna ask you to get the picture or an idea, or a thought, or a memory of something that God is going to use to encourage your partner. The wonderful thing about encourage is the worst you can do if you get it wrong is encourage somebody. And this is really scriptural. Hebrews 5.14 says, talks to the mature who by reason of use have trained their spiritual senses to discern what is good and what is evil, what is God and what is not. And you learn to discern by using your spiritual senses. So, very scriptural what we're about to do, Jeremiah, Hebrews 5.14. So I'm gonna ask you, if you're comfortable to do this exercise, and if you'd like to play full permission to get it wrong, you are practicing, I am a practicing Christian. You would be surprised by the number of things I get wrong, I'm still practicing. So you're a practicing Christian. Would you like to put your hand up if you'd like to play, just so the people around you know that you would like to go. play? Okay. So there's, Great. I would say, just a few of you. Okay. So look around and see who else has their hand up. And have you all spotted somebody you'd like to do this exercise with? Okay. So you may have to move around. There's somebody over here with their hand up. You two need to get together. So look and smile at the person you're with. Put, keep your hand up because there's people who haven't got anybody. So put your hand up. There's somebody over here would like a partner. Anybody else would like a partner? Thank you. There's these lights. I can't really see right, you. Okay. I think you're all... One, think we're Dave, good. there's somebody just back here. Claire, could okay. you go... Or Dave, could you go there? Brilliant. Okay. Good. This is very difficult to do quickly, I am sorry. We'll be as quick as we can. Okay, so everyone, now, listen up, listen, listen. Here we go. Yeah, now we've got cocktail hour happening. So we're going to quieten our voices as well as our hearts. And if you're comfortable, and if you're not comfortable, just get into that soft mid-space mid gaze. If you're comfortable, you may find it easier if you close your eyes, but only if you're comfy. And I'm going to pray. Father God, it always amazes me how kind you are to talk to us when we're in this learning phase. We're practicing. You're not practicing. You really mean it. Lord God, would you in your gracious kindness give the people who are playing this game, who are turning their ears towards you, the picture, idea, or memory of a biblical character or if you don't know the Bible characters, ask the Lord Jesus for a film character so everyone can play. But most of you will be asking for a biblical character, a thought, an idea, a memory, or a picture. And when you've got something, open your eyes and put your heads up so I know where you are in the exercise. Now, if you're playing and you haven't got anything, it means you've dismissed what it was because it really is that simple. It's a stage two. Easy to hear. Now you've got to ask God what that means. 
If, for example, you have Judas and we're doing something encouraging, <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> it probably means they're very good with money. <laughs> so you're going to get something encouraging. Okay. This is a safe space. And you're going to ask the Lord Jesus now, Father, would you please lay it on our hearts? Which part of that character's story you're going to encourage our partner through? And something will just stick out to you. Okay. And now, would one person in your little group put their hand up? Be brave. Okay. The other person is going to start and tell you what they got. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds each, okay? 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Countdown clock is starting. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Oh, hello. What's going on? Okay, so the second person needs to be sharing now. So if you get lots, you have to hold it till the end. So the second person is going to share or they're not going to get time to finish. Did it, did it, did it, did it, boom. All right, come back. Well done, everyone. There we go, there's a little something we did. Big round of applause to Liz Evans, who just quickly did a bit of that. In fact, that's part of what our, our kind of prophetic mentoring school is and just helping people learn and listen to God. Just give us a little wave if you heard from God back then. Just give me a little wave. I can't see you, but I love it when people wave to me. Great. Well, um, I'm just going to pray for us as we go from here. Lord, thank you that you speak to us. And I pray as we go into this week, as we go into this month, Lord, would you speak to us because we are your servants and we're listening. Amen.